We are on our day four of our sanctuary series lessons, which we started four days ago, and I know God has been blessing you. Today also is the day that the Lord has made for us to go again to his word and listen to him speak to us. So I want to welcome you once more so that we can continue learning from the word of God. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for this time you have given with my listener, that we may hear you speak to us through your word, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are on day four, and the message says our journey back to God. Now that we have entered through the one door as we looked yesterday, which represent Christ, the only way to the Father. Now let's begin a brief tour through this unusual structure and learn a few basic lessons before examining the deeper meanings of the sanctuary system. The sanctuary consisted of three principal areas, the courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy place. These three locations represent the three primary steps in the process of salvation known as justification, sanctification, and glorification. The figure above can testify and can show you where justification takes place, sanctification, and also glorification. And they also correspond to the three phases of Christ's ministry. That is the substitutionary sacrifice, the priestly mediation, and the final judgment. The Holy of Holies, the sanctuary most sacred spot, represent the presence of God. The walls around the courtyard and the holy place vividly illustrates man's separation from God. But it is the word of God says in Isaiah 59 verse 2, But your iniquity have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he may not hear your prayers. All of the sanctuary services represents a sinner's journey back to God. In the first three chapters of the Bible, sin enters the world and man is evicted from the Garden of Eden. In the last three chapters of the Bible, sin is eradicated and man is restored to the Garden of Eden and communion with God is restored. Now we want to go to the first place that we have said just where justification takes place, that is the courtyard. The entire structure of the sanctuary was surrounded by a courtyard made of linen curtains set up in a very specific orientation. It was twice as long as its wide, 150 feet along, 150 feet long and 75 feet wide and was to be set up with the one opening facing east, that is the door that we saw yesterday. That arrangement ensured that the worshiper and priests who stood at the door had their backs to the rising sun instead of facing it like the pagan sun worshiping religious of the day. God's people worshiped the creator and instead of the creation, so they were facing to the west not to the east where the sun was rising as the pagan worshippers were doing. So on, in the courtyard, we had the altar of burnt offering. So immediately you enter the sanctuary and the first thing that you encounter is at the door is the brazen altar of burnt offerings. This is where animals were sacrificed. You look at, uh, at uh, Exodus chapter 27, verse 1 to 8, it explains how the courtyard looked like and the items that were found in it. So this altar represents the cross of Christ, where Christ was crucified. So the animal that was uh, sacrificed on the altar of sacrifice represents Jesus Christ himself who died on the cross, the ultimate sacrifice. That is John chapter 1, verse 29. 
The lever was also found on the courtyard. The lever was between the altar of burnt offerings and the tabernacle itself towards stood the lever. And it was also made of brass and was filled with water for the cleansing of the priests. The picture of sinner's justification became clear in the courtyard. Before God gave the Israelites his law on the tables of stone, he saved them from slavery in Egypt by virtue of their faith in the Passover lamb that is symbolized by the altar and baptized them in the sea represented by the lever. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 2, it talks about the baptism the Old Testament people went through. The, uh, the word of God says this. It says that uh, the Old Testament Christians were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So in fact, none will inherit the kingdom of heaven unless he or she is baptized. Even John the Baptist himself, I think, because of the baptism of the Old Testament, that is the baptism of Moses, I also think and uh, I want to confirm to you that also uh, John the Baptist, so he baptized Jesus, though he baptized Jesus without him being baptized, as many say, he was also baptized in the Old Testament system, that is the baptism of Moses. And because he was in the loins, in the loins of uh, the, our grandfathers, so for him also he was baptized through that passing of the Red Sea. John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Then verse 5 explains what it means for one to be born again. It says, Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. That is baptism. So as you look at the sanctuary theme, you can realize that all the steps a Christian should follow for him to inherit the kingdom of heaven is illustrated there. That is, you enter through one door, and that is Jesus Christ. All human beings are to believe in Jesus Christ, even the Muslims. Every religion is supposed to believe in one and that is Jesus Christ, who is our creator. And once you believe in Christ, means you have entered the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary, you give your sacrifice. And the sacrifice we are giving today, it is you claim the blood of Christ who was crucified on the cross. And that cross is the altar of sacrifice. Once you claim that blood, then your sins are forgiven. Once they are forgiven, you go for baptism. So after baptism, we'll be looking at other steps that follows for you to be able to stand firm and also to live according to God's will as you go on journeying back to where our Father is, and that is the most holy place. May the Lord bless you as we continue learning from his message, for he knows better what he wants to do in your life and in my life. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for the message you have given us again this moment. That, Lord, you want us to come back to you. We want us to start a journey back to you, to the most holy place where you dwell. We can do this if we follow the pattern that you have given us in your word. The Lord, through this pattern, will be able to fulfill all righteousness that are needed for us to inherit your kingdom. Bless my listener and my viewer as we continue learning together, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.